Greetings. The following is part of a series of lectures on black holes. In this particular lecture, we will try to maximally extend the Schwarzschild geometry using Kruskal Sekeres coordinates. Moreover, we will gain a more qualitative understanding of black holes through drawing Penrose Carter diagrams. The outline of this lecture is as follows. First, we will give a brief summary of what we have learned in the last lecture. Then, we will explore what goes wrong with Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. Next, we will refresh our memory of some properties of conformal transformations, as they will be crucial in helping us develop an understanding of Penrose Carter diagrams. Afterwards, we will draw the Penrose Carter diagrams from Minkowski space time. Thereafter, we will introduce Kruskal Sekeres coordinates and use these coordinates to, to draw Kruskal Sekeres diagrams, which are maximally extended geometries for the short shield metric. And finally, we will use conformal transformations to convert Kruskal Sekeres diagrams to Penrose Carter diagrams for short shield space time. In the last lecture, we extended the short shield geometry by writing the short shield metric in Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. We can see from the equation above that the coordinate singularity at r equals 2m has been removed, but the singularity at r equals 0 seems to remain. Subsequently, we use the Kreshman scalar to show that the singularity at r equals 0 is a curvature singularity. We also described how time and space coordinates switch place when an object crosses the event horizon and proved that the area of an event horizon cannot classically decrease. In addition to this, we also learned how to draw Finkelstein diagrams. The key takeaways are as follows. As we can see from the figure, as the radius decreases, the future light cones get increasingly tipped towards the singularity. Moreover, at r equals 2m, a null geodesic allows for light to orbit the black hole in a circular motion. And finally, in regions are less than or equal to 2m, all time-like geodesics will head towards the singularity. Now, let us talk about some of the shortcomings of Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates. The issue with Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates is that it is not a maximally extended Schwarzschild solution. The maximally extended Schwarzschild geometry can be divided into four regions, each of which can be covered by a suitable set of Schwarzschild coordinates. Regions one, two, three, and four cover the exterior black hole region, interior black hole region, exterior, exterior white hole region, and interior white hole region, respectively. We will describe these regions mathematically in subsequent slides. In short, the eddington finkelstein coordinates cover regions one and two, but do not cover regions three and four. To solve this problem, we need a new set of coordinates named the kruskal sekeres coordinates. Before we can effectively utilize kruskal sekeres coordinates and draw penrose carter diagrams, we have to recall some properties of conformal transformations. Recall that if we have some space time with metric g mu nu, one can always find a new space time with a conformally related metric g tilde mu nu, such that they are related in the following manner, where omega is some positive function of the coordinates x. A trivial property is that if one takes a null geodesic in the g mu nu space time, one will discover the same curve is a null geodesic in the g tilde mu nu space time. Thus, a conformal transformation will not change the causal structure of space time, as the light cones in g mu nu and g tilde mu nu are the same. However, Recall that this is not the definition of a conformal transformation. A conformal transformation is simply a transformation that preserves angles. Suppose that we take two arbitrary vector fields, v mu and w nu, then the angle between them theta is related in the following manner. Since the angle is preserved, the above is invariant under conformal transformations, and thus g mu nu can simply re be replaced by g tilde mu nu. However, one important point to note is that if g mu nu satisfies the Einstein field equations, it is not necessarily true that g tilde mu nu satisfies the Einstein field equations. Under usual circumstances, if omega does not do anything bizarre, an infinite spacetime will remain infinite under conformal transformations. However, it could be that omega has zeros or poles. In such a case, something of infinite size can be mapped into something of finite size. In other words, g mu nu is infinite. If, if g mu nu is infinite, then g tilde mu nu might be infinite if omega is singular. The easiest way to see this is to contemplate the measure. The measure under conformal transformation is as follows. As we can see, the measure is not invariant. Therefore, there is no reason why the volume should be invariant. In subsequent slides, we will be interested in the case where omega has a pole. Before we attempt to draw Penrose-Carter diagrams for 
uh, Schwarzschild geometries, uh, let us first draw them for Minkowski spacetimes. Perot's Carter diagrams are a visual representation of an infinite spacetime with a finite coordinate range while preserving its causal structure. Recall that the Minkowski metric in spherical coordinates is as follows. The range of time-like and space-like coordinates are small t and small r between minus infinity to infinity, respectively. Now, recall that the null coordinates are small u equals t minus r and small v equals small t plus small r. Therefore, small u and small v are also between minus infinity to infinity. And therefore, the Minkowski metric in null, in null coordinates is as follows. Now, let capital U equal arctan small u, and let capital V equals arctan small v. Therefore, capital U and capital V are bounded between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And thus, the derivatives are as follows. Substituting this back into the Minkowski metric, we obtain the metric in terms of capital U and capital V. Now, if we let capital T equals capital V plus capital U and capital R equals capital V minus capital U, therefore capital R is between zero and pi, and the absolute value of capital T is less than pi minus capital R. Performing this coordinate transformation, we obtain the following metric, where omega is equal to cosine capital R plus cosine capital T. From the above, we can see that the original metric denoted by ds squared is related by a conformal transformation to the new metric d as tilde squared in the following manner. The above metric describes the manifold R cross S3, where S3 is the three sphere and it is maximally symmetric and static. So the Minkowski metric is conformally related to a part of R cross S3 and hence has the same causal structure. Now, let us draw the penrose carter diagram for the Minkowski metric. Recall that the absolute value of capital T plus capital R is less than pi. Thus, this corresponds to this line. Moreover, the absolute value of capital T minus cap capital R is less than pi. This corresponds to this line. And finally, uh, capital R is greater than zero. Therefore, we eliminate anything less for, uh, we eliminate anything in this region. Thus, the remaining portion satisfies the aforementioned inequalities. Now, lines of constant small t and constant small r are related by capital T and capital R by some complicated function, and thus look curvy on the penrose carter diagram. Moreover, light cones are 90 degree angles in this conformal space time. Now, let us discuss some point of interest. I plus corresponds to the point small r equals constant and small t equals plus infinity, and the point I minus corresponds to small r equals constant and small t equals minus infinity. These are called future and past timelike infinities respectively. And in the capital R t plane, these correspond to capital T equals pi and capital R equals zero and capital T equals minus pi and capital R equals zero respectively. Moreover, there is another point of interest called I sub zero, I, I zero corresponding to small t equals constant and small r equals plus or minus infinity. This is called spatial infinity. And in the capital R t plane, it corresponds to capital T equals zero and capital R equals pi. Now, let us define the kruskal sekeres coordinates. First, recall that the null coordinates are related to the Schwarzschild coordinates in the following manner. Therefore, the Schwarzschild metric in null coordinates is as follows. To solve some of the problems with eddington finkelstein coordinates, we can exponentiate the null co coordinates to obtain the following. Taking the necessary derivative yields the following, and substituting these new coordinates into the eddington finkelstein form of the metric yields, yields the following. And thus, this is known as the light covariant of the kruskal sekeres coordinates. Here, R is an implicit function of capital U and capital V and can be solved via the Lambert W function. The advantage of writing the metric in this form is that it is easier to visualize the lines of constant small r and small t. This can be seen in the following two equations. As we can see from the equations above, for constant r, capital V and capital U are inversely proportional. Therefore, lines of constant r correspond to hyperbolas. Similarly, for constant small t, 
uh, capital U and capital V are directly proportional, and therefore lines of constant small t are straight lines. In addition to this, uh, light cone coordinates have useful features that have the useful feature that outgoing nucleodesics are given by capital U equals C sub one, where C sub one is a constant, while ingoing nucleodesics are given by V equals uh, C sub two, where C sub two is some constant. One can observe from equation 5.7, if one sets small r equals to 2m, the event horizons are given by the equations um, capital U times capital V equals zero. Now, if we let capital X equals a half times capital V plus capital U and capital T equals a half capital V minus capital U, the event horizon corresponds to lines that are 45 degrees to X the capital X and capital T axis. Once again, if one stares at equation 5.7 and sets small r to zero, the curvature singularity is given by the equation capital U times capital V equals 2m. Therefore, this corresponds to a hyperbola. Thus, this allows us to draw the kruskal sekeres diagram. In this diagram here, the horizontal axis is the capital X axis and the vertical axis is the capital T axis. We can see that the blue lines correspond to lines of constant R and they are hyperbolic. The gray lines correspond to lines of constant T and they are straight. Moreover, we can see that the curvature singularity represented by the zigzag line is a hyperbola with equation capital U times capital V equals 2M. Moreover, we can see that the equation capital U times capital V equals zero corresponds to the event horizons, and they divide space-time into four regions. The, the physical significance of these regions will be discussed in subsequent sections um, when we discuss uh, penrose carter diagrams for short shield space-time. However, one downside of the kruskal sekeres diagram is that it has infinite range. Uh, for a better visualization, one can perform a conformal transformation to map the kruskal sekeres diagram to a finite range. To do so, we draw the penrose carter diagram for Schwarzschild space-time. And to draw it, we just simply make the following conformal transformation. As we can see from the above equation, the coordinates, capital U and capital V, range from minus infinity to infinity, and they get mapped onto capital U tilde and capital V tilde, ranging from minus pi to pi, respectively. Moreover, if we, let, if we set capital U equals capital V equals to zero, then capital U tilde equals capital V tilde equals zero, which means the lines that correspond to the event horizon remain at 45 degree angles to the new capital X tilde and capital T tilde axes. Now, let the X tilde and T tilde be the horizontal and vertical axes respectively. We can see from the figure that the blue lines correspond to lines of constant r, and the gray lines correspond to lines of constant t. Notice that this whole diagram is very similar to the penrose carter diagram of the Minkowski space, um, Minkowski space time. However, the top and bottom triangles have been chopped off. This is because there are singularities of those points. kruskal sekeres coordinates have several useful features which make them helpful for building intuition about the Schwarzschild space time. Chief among them is that all radio light like geodesics look like straight lines at 45 degree angles when drawn in the Penrose Carter diagram. Moreover, all time like world lines of slower than light objects will at every point have slopes closer to the vertical T tilde axis than 45 degrees. So a light cone drawn in a Penrose Carter diagram will look exactly the same as a light cone drawn in the Minkowski diagram in special relativity. Moreover, the, e, the event horizon corresponds to the equation of lines T, uh, capital T tilde equals capital X tilde and capital T tilde equals minus capital X tilde. Or in the capital U tilde, capital V tilde coordinates, capital U tilde equals zero and capital V tilde equals zero. The zigzag lines corresponds to the curvature singularities. And as mentioned before, these should be hy hyperbolas. But uh, we can always multiply by some conformal factor to make these straight. For more details of this, please look at uh, Cauchy transformations. Since the Schwarzschild metric is invariant under time reversal, the maximally extended solution should yield a Whitehall solution and thus divide the space-time into four regions.
Region one is known as the exterior black hole region, where U tilde is uh, capital U tilde is less than zero and capital B tilde is greater than zero. Region two is known as the interior black hole region, where capital U tilde is greater than zero and capital B tilde is greater than zero. Region three is known as the exterior white hole region, where capital U tilde is greater than zero and capital V tilde is less than zero. And finally, region four is known as the interior white hole region, where capital U tilde is less than zero and capital V tilde is less than zero. Thus, the two black hole horizons coincide with the boundaries of the future light cone of an event at the center of the diagram, namely at capital T tilde equals capital X tilde equals zero, while the two white hole horizons coincide with the boundaries of the past light cone of this same event. The black hole event horizon bordering the exterior region of region one would coincide with a Schwarzschild T coordinate of minus uh, of plus infinity, while the white hole event horizon bordering this region would coincide with a Schwarzschild T coordinate of minus infinity. Reflecting the fact that in short two coordinates, an infalling particle takes an infinite coordinate time to reach the horizon, i.e. the particle's distance from the horizon approaches zero as the Schwarzschild's T coordinate approaches infinity. And a particle traveling up the horizon, up, up and away from the horizon, uh, must have crossed it at an infinite coordinate time in the past. This is just an artifact of how Schwarzschild coordinates are defined. A free falling particle will only take a finite proper time or time as measured by its own clock to pass between an outside observer and an, an, an event horizon. And if a particle's world line is drawn in a Penrose Cardinal diagram, this will only take a finite coordinate time in Schwarzschild, in, in Christgau Sekera's coordinates. In addition to this, any event inside the black hole's interior region will have a light cone that remains in this region such that any world line within the event's future light cone will eventually hit the black hole singularity, which appears as a hyperbola by, uh, bounded by this region. And any event inside the white hole's interior region will have a past light cone that remains in this region such that any world line within this past light cone must have originated in the white hole singularity, a hyperbola bounded by two, bounded by the two white hole horizons. In other words, region two is a region that you cannot escape from, and region four is a region that you cannot stay in, as the singularity is in the past light cone and we must have come from it. Another interesting point is that region one and region three cannot communicate with, with each other. This is because Penrose Car on the Penrose Carter diagrams, there is no causal curve connecting the two regions as they are space-like separated. The only way to connect these space-like separated regions is via a wormhole, which will be explored in greater detail in future lectures. I hope you have learned something from these lectures and see you in the next video.